feedback really is a breakfast of champions because the more you consume it, the more you learn about yourself. This is also a, an opportunity for clarity you know, at a deeper level, right? Ultimately, we're not gonna agree with every piece of feedback we get. You don't need to explain yourself. We can just say thank you for the time and just leave it at that. If you start asking very clear questions and getting specific and concise about what they're offering you, it not only shows that you're very interested in the feedback that they're giving you, but it helps you disarm those expectations that you have. That means they invested time in you. That's a beautiful thing regardless. One of the hardest things to get in life is feedback sometimes. And we can know that it is helpful. We can know that directionally it can help us expand our own perspective of the direction we're going in life. But it doesn't make it easier to receive it when it comes our way. And I know when I have been in positions, when I've received feedback, when I wasn't self-aware, it could trigger me in ways that after the fact, I was like, man, all that person was doing was attempting to help me and it did not go well. And after I wanted to go and apologize and thank them for their sincere desire to help me move forward, whether it was in my career, it was in my personal life, it didn't matter. Friends often want to give you feedback to help you move through something. And those are the easiest ones to go, just get out of my way, right? You just lash out sometimes. And I really wanted to dive in in this discussion to talk about what are tips that we could give to navigate through so people didn't have to go through what I went through, or at least we could start to tame that beast, right? We could really start to tame that beast of lashing out, especially if we've proactively asked for the feedback, right? And not lash out at the people that we've said, hey, would you provide me with some feedback? And then they do it. And then you're like, Rawr! and you attack them for doing the very thing you asked for. So what are nine tips that I personally use and we've started using together, especially in a partnership that keep us from just lashing out once we receive that feedback? Absolutely. Yeah, it's you know, we get feedback in all sorts of ways, right? It could be in relationships, it could be in business, it can be in friendships, in uh, you know maybe when we're doing sports or art or you know there's so many ways that we receive feedback, and it's tough because when we are doing something and we want to put our passion and our full self into it, and we're like, yes, we're giving it a hundred percent. It's really hard to separate whatever that is that action that we're taking and our own identity. And so that's where these kind of uh these kind of tips can really come in to to really help in that area, create that slight separation and recognize the importance of that feedback. As my dad always said, uh, feedback is the breakfast of champions. And so, you know, how do we how do we support our inner champion in this way by receiving feedback in an effective uh and constructive way that doesn't hurt our ego or doesn't you know, hurt a friendship or something like that. And it really allows what the true essence of what feedback is all about, which is help and love to shine through. Yes. And I can't make a promise that it won't hurt the ego. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like that's yes. a big promise over this, but at least it will keep your ego from lashing out yes. at the other person. Because sometimes we do need to create that space between that ego response and what actually comes out of our mouth, right? Yes. <laughs> and that's what we want to create here is that separation between the two. Fine that we have that ego response. That's part of being human. But does that mean that we need to let that be what comes flowing out of our mouth? We do have a choice where that's concerned.
And I love the Breakfast of Champions for anyone who doesn't know the whole Wheaties thing. It was a breakfast cereal and the whole thing was it's the Breakfast of Champions. And ultimately, whether you enjoyed Wheaties or not, feedback really is a breakfast of champions because the more you consume it, the more you learn about yourself and the more you can determine what you take in and what you don't. And I think that's a key aspect of this is that choice where with Wheaties, whatever they put in the freaking cereal is what you were going to take in that day, right? You, You didn't get a choice with that. But with feedback, you do. And that's a key component of this. And one of the first aspects, right, we talk about creating space. And we think about that when we talk about what comes out of the between the ego response and what actually comes out of our mouth. But we also have to, if we're going to ask for feedback, we have to make sure that we choose the right moment, which is that first tip, right? Because so often we are in our own frame of mind and we're not paying attention to what's going on in the surroundings around us. And we just want what we want when we want it. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that inherently. But if we're not choosing the right time to ask for feedback, then we might get backlash instead of feedback, right? And we don't want that because that's not going to help us. So if you're in the middle of doing 15 things and I am working on a Canva template for our community and I say, hey, Austin, can you stop everything you're doing? Because right now I need this from you. Can you give me feedback right now? That's probably not the optimal time to be asking you. Yes, I need your feedback right now, but you're not in a position to just stop everything and provide me that feedback. So it's up to me if I truly desire the best feedback from you to look for a time when it's optimal for you and still optimal for me to request that feedback, not just force my way into the middle of what you're doing to ask for that feedback. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. One of my favorite things is even though we work next to each other, <laughs> we <do. laughs> which we do, <laughs> and, um, and we're constantly talking to each other in that sense, but you know, if we have headphones on or we're, we're focusing on, on something uh, and we're not like physically communicating, like talking, um, you know, you'll send me a text or something. Right. And it's just like, instead of it being like, Hey, right now do this, <laughs> you know, you know, give me that feedback. It's, it's, you know, Hey, when you have time today, it'd be really great if you could help me with this or give me your feedback on this. Is this in alignment with what we're looking for, for example? And so it gives me the space to not feel rushed and lash out back at you or something like that. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm right in the middle of something. And here you are, you know, asking for something. And it's like, it's not being aware of my time. And then if I don't give, you know, the expectation of what the feedback should be in the way that it may be like, there's expectation on the way it should be given, yeah. then it, it starts to create this snowball effect of negativity. And, and then in the feedback, this, the situation of feedback, which is designed to help and grow and support, ends up being something that creates the opposite experience for both you and I, right? And so I think, unfortunately, a lot of us get into that position. Um, and so this simple approach is why I love this tip. And I love it's like first one, it's just being aware and, and just saying, okay, well, it doesn't have to be right now. And, you know, if I was open right now in that moment that it happened to be, which has happened before, it's like, boom, I can get right on it and I'm right there. But I don't feel pressured. I don't feel pushed. And, and then, you know, I'm, it allows me to give the time that you desire to fully support you in what you desire. And so then it's a win-win for both of us. And then we can provide that. And so you can receive knowing it's coming from a place of love. And I can share knowing that it's coming from a place of love. And then that way it can really be the best version. Yeah. And it's not easy to wait sometimes when you're putting yourself out there, right? If I'm, and I'll keep using the Canva template, like I've created this thing and I'm, here's my creation. I want you to look at it right now, right now, 
what do you mean I have to wait hours before? Or maybe I am up against a deadline and I need that focus right now. But if you don't have the time to provide that focus, that doesn't limit me. Then I look for somebody who may have the available bandwidth in the time that I need in order to review it. So I don't need to feel pressured or limited by what I need to have done. And that's something else that we need to be willing to look at is, okay, if I do need feedback on a work project, then what other resources or avenues do I have? If Austin is the only person who can review this, then I need to make it clear to Austin, look, I am up against a deadline. And I apologize that I pushed it to this point, but if you would like to provide feedback, then here is the deadline. And then I've made it clear and concise that we're up against a deadline and you get to choose. Then I'm not forcing you to give feedback. I'm providing you a window to give feedback. And that changes the framework too. Then you're not feeling like, oh, if I don't give her feedback right now, then she's going to be mad at me. It is, okay, I know she has this deadline. If I get her feedback, great. If I don't, that's okay too. And we just go out with what we have. Exactly. Right. So timing is so important in all these different things. And when you're talking about relationships, right? If somebody's had a really bad day, maybe not the best time mm -hmm. to ask them for feedback because you're not going to get unbiased feedback. It's a human trait, right? If I'm in a mental space where I need to nurture my own internal environment, it will be very challenging for me to step out of that and look at what you're navigating with an unbiased lens. Yeah. So observe that and then maybe choose a different time to ask that person for their feedback. Not that they wouldn't be a good resource, just not right now. Right. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I mean, because it's one thing with the work project, which is something outside, you know, again, that's something outside of self, even though we put our creativity into it and our passion into it and it feels like a part of us in some way. But when we're asking, like in a relationship, for example, and it's our own actions, you know, that, that's where we really hold on to it as part of our identity because it's yeah. you know it's we're, we're tied into this right and it's it's uh it's something we're actually not only feeling inside but we're expressing outwardly and so one of the favorite things that i love that you and i do together is that when we wake up in the morning we kind of share where we're at you know um like today uh, for example you know <laughs> uh i woke up not feeling 100 percent, not like anything's bad i don't feel sick i don't feel like i just like um you know, it's been a busy couple of days for me the last couple of days and you know i may not have gotten like the best sleep last night and so i just feel a little off i'm human it happens mm -hmm. we all wake up and we don't you know it's not like we're ready to take on the day it's like hey this one's a little bit this one's a little bit of you know the struggle is real right now it's a little rough <laughs> and, right and, now <laughs> and so so you know we we take the time to share that like first thing in the morning so we know where we're at for the day and that really helps us understand like the, if i hear that from you or you hear that from me it sets the tone for the day in terms of, okay, how do I communicate to my partner? Yeah. And so, you know, you're not going to just like, when I get up and I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm not feeling hundred percent right now. And then you start like badgering me with a bunch of things, you know, oh, that's going to just create a lot of frustration and angst and vice versa. Right. Right. And so, you know, that's the way that we approach each other becomes a little bit different. Right. Where if I woke up and I said, man, I'm, I'm just ready to take on the day. I'm so pumped for this. Like, let's go. And then you really needed something in that moment. Then, yeah, hey, you know, you're kind of like, I'm, OK, you've given me the green light to be free and I can just like, you know, start diving right into it. And, and again, vice versa. And so that that little bit of understanding, that's why this tip is so important in a relationship or at work. You know, you can really be aware of what's going on around you and the timing of things. And that can really support the unconscious oftentimes unconscious expectation we place on others when we ask for their help but if we can take this little extra step to fulfill um fill the gap 
that we aren't fully aware of, then that can really support us and take the feedback to the next level. Yes, I love, I love that. And I do love that we are so willing to share. And that's also kind of leads in to number two or tip number two, which is be open and vulnerable, mm-hmm. right? And in that way, we are proactively being open and vulnerable with each other in a relationship. But no matter how you're soliciting that feedback or receiving that feedback, we have to be willing to be open and vulnerable as it's coming in. Because as we talked about in the beginning, it can trigger us, right? It can very deeply trigger that ego of what? I didn't expect, and that's a huge key part of it, right? I didn't expect that you would provide that as feedback. Mm -hmm. So now my ego is on the defense. And if we're open and vulnerable to what we're receiving, then it's easier to soften that ego response. That's so critical. Because, yeah, it's sometimes we unintentionally ask for feedback because we might be fishing for compliments or, you know, because we feel really good about it. We kind of want that external validation. Right. And when maybe it's sent back in not the way we thought, you know, in in a very different way than what we feel about it, it can be quite jarring. I mean, we've all been there probably where it's just like, Oh, I feel so good about this. You know, I'd love your thoughts on it. And then someone responds like, uh, and then, and then it feels it feels like a personal hit, you know. It's like, are, are you mad at me? And you know, what's like, yeah. you know, what's what's what the deal here? Doing? Like, you know, yeah. Um, but the reality is, is, it wasn't. It's just, well, I mean, maybe maybe someone's having an off day too. But, yeah. um, but for the most part, let's just let's just say most of the time, maybe it's it's just honest feedback, and it's yeah. because it's not what you wanted to hear, then it gets received very very differently. Like, yeah, like it's a, um you know, stab in the back or something like that in that sense. And so being open and vulnerable and and being willing to kind of uh, relieve yourself of the tie, the personal tie to it, like we're talking about here, it's so critical. And and being vulnerable, it's like when we ask for feedback and and we say we want something in return um, and we have an expectation, we're not being open, we're actually being closed. Mm-hmm. And that's that's something that we're often not not necessarily aware of of how closed we are because we're we creating an expectation around it, leaving letting go of the expectation, allowing it to really unfold, is both extremely vulnerable and open, and so uh, you might feel hurt by it, and that's an opportunity. Yeah. And so if it's Oftentimes we can really grow when those kind of things happen. When we ask for feedback and it isn't, what, you know, we allow whatever it is to unfold and it does hurt, then, you know, maybe, maybe there's something deeper there that we actually, maybe the feedback isn't necessarily on the thing itself that we needed, but maybe there's a deeper lesson there. You know, maybe that this whole situation came forward to help us uh, heal a, a deeper, maybe a deeper trauma or a deeper, um, struggle that we're experiencing that we've suppressed for a very long time in this this very thing the situation has come forward to help us unearth that yes and one of the other things that we do that i really kind of love and we laugh about it all the time is safe words (laughs) (laughs) not those kind of safe words but safe words in conversation Mm -hmm. during feedback right Mm -hmm. because they can make you laugh Mm -hmm. if you're in the midst of it so If you're being open and vulnerable and someone says something that is way too triggering or way too hurtful, if you have a pre-established conversation safe word, it can be so helpful, like banana Mm -hmm. or pineapple, which is, (laughs) you know, something that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. It can if you're giving me feedback and it's like triggering me, triggering me, triggering me, and I yell, pineapple! <laughs> <laughs> like, how can that not immediately lighten the mood mm-hmm. and let you know in a very jovial way, like, okay, I'm hitting a nerve here. Mm-hmm. And 
maybe I need to step back from my communication and look at, am I being critical or am I giving feedback? Because there is a difference in the way that you give feedback too. Am I being constructive and am I being helpful and offering that? Or am I in a space where I'm being hypercritical and I need to readdress too? And so having a safe word in conversation is important equally as much, right? (laughs) So it's just a fun way where if you're headed in and you're like, okay, I'm going to ask for your feedback, but I want to pre-establish a safe word. So if I feel like I'm being attacked instead of I'm getting feedback, I'm going to yell this word and you're going to know what that means. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. It's a disarming pattern interrupt, right? Exactly. For For both parties, right? So, yeah. um, yeah, that's a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we were, we were watching, uh, Ted Lasso for anyone who, who loves it. And, and one of the things that they, uh, Ted was, was sharing is that they say Oklahoma and that's like a way to kind of disarm and just say, okay, no, actually when this is said, I have to tell the truth. Yes. And so when they're sharing about what's going on and they're like, you know, are you good? And they're like, He's like, yeah. And then someone says, no, Oklahoma. And he's like, okay, no, I'm not. I'm not good. Um, it's it's a way to kind of be, it's a great way to be vulnerable and to trust that the other person is there holding that space, being loving and still being in the flow. But the other person can't give the feedback or or share in the way if we're not willing to be fully vulnerable. And so that's where this really it comes in as a, as a great tip to kind of as you said, make it jovial, like have it be a fun experience. Um, and so, cause yeah, feedback can get, you know, gnarly pretty quickly. You know, it can really, it can really like shift and turn unintentionally very negative and very, you know, and that's not going to help anyone, you know? So when we can keep it light and keep it enjoyable, I mean, that's what, that's what love feels like. Love feels, it shouldn't feel heavy. It should feel light. Yeah. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. And so when you use this under that vulnerable tip, it just helps you remain vulnerable and not worry that you're going to be attacked for me. Tip number three is to ask very specific questions, right? So as someone's giving you feedback, One of the quickest and easiest ways to disarm your expectations is to ask questions about what they're offering you, right? Because chances are you might not understand everything that they're offering. And miscommunication occurs between they have the thought in their head and the vision in their head, and maybe they're not fully communicating it to you. Or you have the expectation so clear in your mind that you're not receiving everything. So if you start asking very clear questions and getting specific and concise about what they're offering you, it not only shows that you're very interested in the feedback that they're giving you, but it helps you disarm those expectations that you have and get all the information that they're offering you so that you can look at it from all those different sides. Love that. Absolutely. And when you can, like one of my favorite things about you, when you ask for feedback, you're very, you have a lot of clarity around what type of feedback you're asking for. For example, on the Canva, it's like, you know, Hey, I've got a really, a really great, um, structure and I'm very confident with the look and the feel, but I really need help with the content. It's like, oh, okay, then I know exactly where to go with this. And it it gives me, instead of just saying, hey, can you provide feedback on this? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what does that mean? Is it font? Is it the the colors? Is it, you know, the structure? You know, what, what, I mean, there's so many things that that could could be. And so it really helps flow the conversation in a way and it helps taper that expectation because if you just said, hey, I need feedback on this and you were specifically looking for content, and I come back and I say, hey, um, I, you know, instead of blue, I think it should be green. You're like, well, that wasn't helpful. Yeah. And that's what happens, right? And then it becomes, then there's animosity. And it's like, well, you know, that's, you know, I need, actually need feedback and you didn't give me any. Like, but from my point, I did. Because yeah. that's what was asked. And 
because there was no clarity, then, you know, that, that's what occurs. So when we can be really specific in the ask from the very, from the get go, right, then that can, that can facilitate a strong connection between the sender and the receiver in, in the feedback loop. Yes. And then you can also say, if I've given you that specific request, you can ask me, are you open to additional feedback? Because I do think it would look better green or a different color or, and that then allows me to step back and either say pineapple or, (laughs) you know, have a different view on something. Um, So that's where specificity is so, so important. And so is active listening, which is our next next tip because if i'm not hearing all of what you're saying and i'm not engaged in listening to okay here are my pieces of feedback especially around the content that you've created but i also have feedback in this area then i'm going to still be set back on well this is what he said about the content he didn't like this part of the content. And so I'm still back in the conversation, listening to the content and not hearing what you have to say about other pieces of what could be improved. And I'm missing that. So then I send you the revised version and you're like, but I said I would like it this color too. Why didn't you make that change? I wasn't engaged in the full amount of the feedback. And so staying present to the entire conversation, not getting triggered so much so that I'm missing pieces of the feedback will be key. Active listening, being present for the whole conversation. Yeah, I love that. And reinforcing it uh, after. And, yes. and so like when you, when you ask for feedback on something and you're very specific with it, and then I provide that feedback you know, my expectation isn't isn't that you're going to take 100 percent of my feedback, um, but if you and you, you send, let's say you come back and you send me a revised version and it had nothing, I'd be like, oh well, you know, did I did I help or why do you need my why, do you why did my you feedback? even ask me? You yeah. Know, yeah. But... <laughs> and so what I love is that you'll oftentimes just say, hey, you know, I really appreciated your feedback um, on the content and the colors. Uh, I still felt really confident with the colors and and I implemented what I really felt helped uh, in the content to, to kind of round everything out. And then I was like, Oh, okay. She was listening. Yeah. Whether she took all of it, look, you know, doesn't mean my feedback is going to be the greatest feedback in the history of feedback. Like yes. I'm not anticipating, yeah, got it you know, all. like, you know, <laughs> how dare you not use what I say? <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's, it's like just knowing that even if one of the things that I shared of like, let's say I give you like 10 things and you're like, Hey, just one of them was good. And you received all of them. It's like, okay, perfect. Then, then I, these were just options. These were ideas. These were to help you expand your awareness so that you could have the knowledge you need to create what exactly what you desire to create. And so it's like helping you get out of your own way. And that's really what feedback can do and it's such a that's what's so beneficial about it right yeah. and so when you can reinforce it in the return and say hey thanks so much you know you I really appreciate you provided this specific area of feedback for me um you know i'm really happy with this final result and then it's like okay great then it's like a close now the loop has been closed right and it's like i've been heard you've been seen we're good let's move forward we appreciate you yeah exactly And that kind of goes to tip number five, which throughout, avoid justifying and defending, Mm. right? But I don't want to. (laughs) (laughs) But but you're attacking me. (laughs) Even if you feel like you're being attacked with critical comments versus feedback, if you start defending or justifying what you're seeking feedback on, then it turns into a disagreement, which isn't going to be a positive outcome. Simply walk away if that's the direction you feel like you're going. Use the safe word of the conversation. Use clarifying questions to redirect it. But if you start defending 
or justifying, then you're not actually receiving feedback in any direction, which then completely cuts off your opportunity, the very thing you went there for. Mm -hmm. And so you would have to ask yourself, do you truly desire feedback? Or are you in a place where that's not really what you're looking for? And you do feel, maybe you do feel confident. Maybe you don't really want feedback and you were just going through the motions of feedback. Nothing wrong with that. But then don't launch that on to somebody else in the guise of looking for feedback. Or then take a step back, take a breath and say, why am I defending? Am I expecting that they'll just agree with me? And so my ego is in the way and I need to tame my ego a little bit, tell my inner critic to take a back seat and come forward at this again, apologizing for being defensive and then sit and listen and receive again, engaging that act of listening. Love that. Absolutely. This is also a, an opportunity for clarity, you know, at a, at a deeper level, right? Because um, mm -hmm. if someone provides feedback and then our initial responses to, to justify, for example, um, instead of that, it could be a, a way to remind ourselves, like, oh, you know, maybe I wasn't clear from the get go, uh, and so I sh maybe we can over say, hey, I apologize for not being clear. This is why I set this up this way, or this is why I structured it this way to provide more context. Because oftentimes it's really hard to provide quality feedback if we don't have the full context of what's being asked. Yeah. Right. And so if feedback is given and it's like, and, and they're, you know, sharing, and it's like, well, you know, from maybe from your standpoint, you knew this. Like, well, yeah, that's why I did that. But if they didn't know, you know, that's our opportunity from the beginning to go back to number three. Tip number three you know, is, is really, this is where this kind of comes into play, is maybe start, start it from the very beginning when asking, being clear. And so that can help limit the opportunity for needing to justify, like, you know, that, so as clear as you can be up front, then that kind of limits that experience. But you can be sometimes be so clear and it doesn't you know the feedback still triggers that and so that's where i think what you said is is absolutely uh, beautiful as well thank you and ultimately we're not going to agree with every piece of feedback we get yeah we all see things from different perspectives and that again goes to has our ego been triggered and we feel like we need to defend our position and we'll go back to the canva document it's just so easy to do it like how i create is different than how you would create and so while i honor the feedback you would give me especially around colors or the design of it not necessarily content we we pretty much align on content mm -hmm. like that's that's a given but just look and feel, it's going to be very different. And so if I became defensive every time you told me that you didn't like a color or you didn't like the spatial alignment of something, then you and I would be fighting nonstop. I simply need to be grateful that you're willing to share your perspective on designs with me because it does make me look at things from a different perspective sometimes. Sometimes I'm just like, no, I feel pretty good in this, but I'm not going to defend it or tell you, no, I'm going to receive that information because it may help me in a future design, mm -hmm. right? So it's good information still. I may not apply it right then, but to get defensive is not going to help us in that moment. I don't need to defend what I've created if I believe in it. I can believe in it and still honor that you have a different perspective of it. And that's the key thing to remember. Why do I need to defend it when it's just a different perspective? Absolutely. So relative. Right. A lot of feedback is relative. So I think that's why it goes straight beautifully into the next one. Yeah. Um, Which is? Gratitude. 
right? And so when instead of defending ourselves or justifying and all that, a quick shift can be just saying thank you. You know, we don't need to go into all of that. We don't need to, you know, that is like you're saying, that's all egoic. That yeah. At some point we can save everyone time and energy and effort. Someone gives back feedback and instead of defending it, you say, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Whether you agree, let's say you didn't agree with any of it, fine. That's okay. It doesn't, doesn't need to, exp you don't need to explain yourself. We can just say thank you for the time and just leave it at that. And that way we let the other person know that we appreciate because that's the time they're not getting back. That means they invested time in you. That's a beautiful thing regardless. And so, you know, maybe someone was having a rough day and they provided, maybe the feedback was mean. Maybe it wasn't great. Maybe they, you know, either way, they still invested time. That's still a loving act. When we can view it from that standpoint, that can, we can just start to let things go and just be in the gratitude. Because as we talked about before in previous podcasts, you know, gratitude is like unlocking abundance. It's a key to unlock abundance, right? Yeah. And so when we can be in a space of gratitude and just thank someone and just let it go, you know, that, that allows us that opportunity to continue to be in that space of vulnerability and openness and just learn, maybe even it's just learning what not to do. And maybe, or maybe the feedback came back and it's like, look, all it did was affirm what I already have. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for that time. Thank you for the, the, the sharing and the support and the love. And um, yeah, it just can be that simple. Yeah. Because that moves us into tip number seven, which is reflect and evaluate. It gets you into all of that information, gets you into that space where you can take the information you've received, especially if you've reached out to more than one person. and you can say, where are the commonalities among the feedback? Do I need to act on everything? Do I see that there are patterns, especially if you're on a personal development journey and maybe one of the steps in that personal development journey was to reach out to a handful of people and ask them for feedback in a specific area. I've been through many self-development curriculums where they've asked that. And then you suddenly get back this feedback from your family and friends and you're like, oh, I see a pattern here. And it's up to you then to decide what am I going to do about it? And it's so easy to feel overwhelmed because you suddenly see that there is a pattern and you want to take it all on right then and there. And it's important to take step number seven to reflect and evaluate on the feedback, right? Yeah. And the reason why this is so important that this one is after gratitude is because when we can reflect and evaluate with the energy of gratitude, it can really, really change our behaviors. It can really shift the dynamic that we experience. And so uh, that's why I love these two together. And, and it just, it really helps us get really clear. So we're not clouded by our own judgment of ourselves or you know, maybe we're judging other people for the feedback they gave us and we're back into defending ourselves and justify, you know, and then it creates this negativity and we're, we're really um, feeding that inner critic, right? Yes. And so from this place of gratitude though, you know, we're, we're just, as you said beautifully, my love, we're silencing that inner critic, right? And, and we're not giving space for the inner critic to come in. We're enhancing our inner champion. And we're, we're feeding, yeah, we're feeding our inner champion here. And then that's where gratitude, reflection, evaluating, um, there's a big difference between evaluating and judging, right? right? Um, evaluating, you're, you're observing, you're exploring, you're seeking to understand. Uh, and it helps you get really clear. 
and that's that's really if if all we did in terms of the feedback maybe it wasn't a specific thing to make this change to that but it got you the clarity you needed regardless of what was sent back then it then what you asked for was achieved yeah and again, we go back to what you said about feedback being the breakfast of champions. Those of us who desire to consistently grow and move forward, this is a key step. Yes, we have to be vulnerable when asking for it. We have to be willing. We 100% have to be willing to put ourselves out there and not let the ego take the steering wheel, not let the inner critic sit on our shoulder like that little devil that you always see in the cartoons and whisper, you don't need anybody else to tell you what they see. Because it is very important. We can look into our inner world and know what we see, but there's always a reflection like a mirror and other people are going to see us from different perspectives and give us those different angles. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to take them all in, but they give us different points of view. And this time of evaluation gives us that look to incorporate it all inward and say, okay, this is how I'm getting perceived from the external. Now, it's based on their lens too and how their internal is perceiving my external based on their internal lens. So a lot of it has to do with their inner critic and their growth, and I understand that. So I don't need to take this as a personal slate, but I do have to take it as an observational lens outside of me. Now, how am I going to incorporate that perspective, that lens, into what I see of myself? And then the next step, step number eight is what am I going to do with that information? What action am I going to take? Am I going to take any action or is it just good information? These are all very, very key things to decide because if you do see a common pattern from everyone that you've received the feedback from, it might be kind of important to look into it and see if there is something to it, right? But if it's just a one-off, it might be something that's going on in that person's internal world that is being mirrored back to them and might not necessarily be about you. And that's okay too, right? But you have to be willing to maintain that vulnerability all the way through the feedback process and be willing to look at any common themes, be willing to ask yourself what action you can take from it. If it's work and it is just one-on-one, -on -one, understand what is going to yield your most positive results on a creation that you have going forward and what isn't. And as you said, be willing to, when you provide the finished document, say, this is what I chose to use. This is what I didn't. And maybe this is why. And that's part of the action. Yeah, absolutely. Feedback is an awareness generator. Yes. Right. And so uh, a friend of mine was recently saying that one of the favorite things that he enjoys in meeting people and connecting with people and friends is he really gravitates towards people who are self-aware. And I, it took me a moment just to kind of step back because I hadn't heard that in a little bit. And, um, and he's right. I mean, what a, what a beautiful trait and a quality in someone who is self-aware. Um, not necessarily from a deprecating standpoint, but more of like, hey, I know my, my I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses, and like from his point of view, like he seeks to be as aware as he can. He likes to make jokes around it, and where his weaknesses are, he'll point them out. But he'll do it in a way that's kind of fun and jovial, and just like, hey, this is this is where I'm at, and you know, I'm working on it, or I'm I'm putting effort here, but you know, I just want to be transparent, and straightforward, and I and I love that, and I and I love the response of that, and so. It, it helped me see him in a different light when I was like, wow, he's, he's aware not only of his own self-awareness, but of others too. Yeah. And so when we're looking at feedback from this really, really big, big picture, 
and we're seeking to take action, uh, you know, awareness is what helps us gain the knowledge. And when we have the knowledge, then we can put that into practice through our actions. And so the more that we can be really intentional and purposeful around the, our, this awareness generator, like feedback, and, and utilize it in the best way to bring out the best of us and those around us, that can be a fantastic loving process. Yes. And it goes into tip number nine. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Continuous improvement which is exactly what you talked about, right? If we are willing and we recognize that we're continuously improving all of the time, then feedback is a huge mechanism for that, as you just said, right? So it's a journey. We're all on a journey and it's not as though we just, all right, I'm going to get your feedback once and then woohoo, I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me go, right? And but part of the reason that I felt so compelled to write the Silence Your Inner Critic guide is because it is such a superhero journey to me, right? We all are on this epic quest called life. And I personally desire to be the superhero in my own life journey. And I don't want my inner critic to be the villain that comes in and causes me to spit venom at other people around me or kind of takes me down at the knees in my own life and holds me captive. I desire to have the most epic quest in this life. And the only way that I'm going to do that is to continuously improve and continuously grow the way that you see superheroes do in these movies or if you read comics or you watch these amazing shows that they're in they always have these like inner battles as well as these confrontations outside and not just with the villain but with people that don't understand them and that's very much the same as what our lives are like, but they do always ask for feedback and they always ask for help. And they're always willing to take that in and grow from within. And that's what I feel like this is about, right? It's our opportunity to rise up and let our inner champion be that hero and say, I'm going to take feedback. I'm not going to let it be my kryptonite. I'm not going to let it take me down. I'm going to rise with it. And I'm going to choose what fits for me and what doesn't. And I'm going to let it make me better. Yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds beautiful. Um, absolutely. Um, feedback is an incredible, incredible tool for personal development. There's not much more I can say beyond what you just said, because that was so so well positioned um the only thing i can say outside of these tips is is really that um feedback can also be a great way for connection and so uh, as we talk about people just want to be seen heard and gotten and if we're looking to create a new relationship a new friendship a new connection point maybe reach out to someone at work or in your family that maybe you feel a little disconnected from or you know ask for feedback yeah i mean what a great way to start a connection because it helps someone understand you know, people by asking them and they share their opinion or their thoughts or their perspectives you know it highlights that each one of us has a unique perspective that no one else in the world has they might be close but they're not exactly the same and so that that just little act can help someone feel seen, heard, and gotten. Because especially if you just are focused in gratitude and you say thank you for that, and you let them know that you're there and that you care and that they helped you, that might be the very thing that they needed to help themselves. Yeah. Oftentimes, the very, I mean, I, I've been there when, when, when I'm going through something and then someone asks for my feedback or thoughts on something, and then I share it. I'm like, wow, that was the advice I needed. Yeah. That goes back to mirroring, right? right? Yes. That thing where it was like, oh, <laughs> and then it might not fit for me, but it was exactly what you needed. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Exactly. 
So we just never know what's going on in someone else's life. Mm-hmm. And so when we can use this, this feedback as that awareness generator and allow this to be something that is loving, supportive and, and helpful and growth, then, then you know, we're really helping each other out. And that may be exactly what that other person needed. And ultimately that could create a friendship or a relationship or a partnership or something that we may never know, maybe never would have happened without that. And that's such a beautiful thing. I agree. And we want feedback from our community all the time. That way we know if we're supporting them in the way that they need. So we would encourage anyone listening to this or watching it to provide us feedback very specific feedback on topics that would most benefit them that we could speak about, especially in the areas of love and what they would like to see as far as books coming out. Now that we have Silence Your Inner Critic, that will be coming out this summer, which they can register, pre-register and save 20% at silentyourinnercritic.com. What other types of books would help them? We have a communication series that is coming forward that we could focus on first. We have the science and the spirituality of human, being human, that could come forward. We could continue down this path of the inner work where the inner critic is concerned. So what would be helpful? What would be most helpful? Right, yeah. Is it workshops? Is it retreats? You know, is it uh, more online courses? You know, we're building this community right now, uh, which you can look in the, in the description below called Mighty Life Launchpad. Um, feel free to click the link, learn more, join the wait list. Uh, it's going to have tons of different uh, online courses and workshops and, and downloadable PDFs uh, all centered around this kind of topic like what we're talking about today. And so we just want to build a, a just a plethora of tools and community um, and it's why like our focus isn't necessarily like we want to provide as much information as we can through this free podcast and so anything that is paid for when it comes to us is just about implementation um, because you know we can all go on the internet and find a ton of information but it's how we implement it that's so important you know what what intention and purpose are we bringing behind that implementation are we doing it as a community are we doing it as a large group small group are we doing it individually is it one-on-one and so as you explore the Suivera content, you know, that's, that's kind of what we're bringing forward. And that's our focus. But it's all going to be around this type of information. So uh, as much as you're willing to, to share and, and help us grow and provide that feedback, let us know exactly what you're looking for, exactly what you need to be the best version of yourselves. You know, us and the community are here to support you and provide you the tools that you need to, to experience the, the life that you desire. And a like and a share is always appreciated.